I'm actually hoping I get to keep this part of my foot. I'm hoping the healing process works. And if the flow is just too bad, then they're gonna actually do a below the knee amputation. For years, many, many years of my adult life, I've been wanting to own my own Harley Davidson motorcycle. The bike I want to get requires me to at least have a heel so I can use the foot brake and sit on the bike properly. And unfortunately, today the doctor said they're a bit worried about my left foot because its blood flow is starting to seize up there too. If the infection starts to spread, they have no course but to remove it before it reaches um, the rest of my body. Because um, once that infection gets up here, it's pretty much good night, goodbye. Come in. Hey, Brian. Hello, Patricia. Okay. After 15 years with type 2 diabetes, Brian Kaido is fighting to keep his limbs. Brian was working as a social worker till a coma put him in hospital. He's been here five months because a small cut developed into an untreatable infection. He's just lost half his right foot. So how many carbs have you had? I, I didn't have too many carbs today. You didn't have too many carbs? No, I don't think so. You just explained you had three sushis Oh, what's, Which, what's the carbon of sushi? You have rice in there, that's carbohydrates. Oh, true, yes. Sloppy Joe with the bun, uh, yeah. that's another carb. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Right. No worries. Fit and healthy, Bernice Snook had no idea she was at risk. About 10 years ago, I was training to do a marathon, and I got a blister on the bottom of my foot. And then one morning I woke up and my whole foot was bright red and ended up in hospital and it was a diabetic ulcer. And I had um, seven operations in 21 days and I ended up losing my leg. If I could have my chance again, I think I would absolutely watch what I eat as a younger person so when you can get older, the chances are going to be less. Bernice is an end-stage kidney failure. Everywhere you turn, somebody's a diabetic now, and I think it's because of the easy foods that we eat, and the sugar content is unbelievable in them. I do my dialysis about four to five times a week, and usually for a minimum of four hours. So I'm just um, measuring up my heparin that goes into the machine, so when your blood's going through it, you, it doesn't clot. They can tell if you're not doing your dialysis properly, so they'll just come in and take your machine away and you end up having to go to the hospital. You can't go any more than two days without being on the dialysis machine. So it limits you to things that you can do because every second day, basically, you have to be on the machine. It's not a nice thing to have to do. If you can do something to help yourself before you get to this stage, then absolutely do it. Mm. I'm from Samoa, and family is so important. No family, no happiness. We won't be forever, together forever. So if we pass and they know how to grow and live in a healthy, healthy life, Raising five children is not easy. It's a lack of finance. And what I suggest, healthy food should be cheaper than the fat food that people just easy buying from, so you just take away the nets. Make the healthy food cheaper. I have diabetes type two. What I suggest about getting a diabetes, not only food, some people stress, worry, and struggle with finance, that's the stress. When you go to the doctor, they always need to stop drinking fizzy drinks and that. 
I don't drink fizzy drinks. But stress and worry, my health and my family's health, not that great. And it's all because of um, what we eat sometimes. This country all about money. If you don't pay your house, you don't have a house. No money, no food. So if you have no money, the kids won't have a good learning at school. Sometimes I cry when all my kids were still at school. Sometimes I cry. You know, it's so hard to let them go without lunch. The doctor has had some bad news for Brian. They're really disappointed with the condition they found my, my heel to be in. And he looked at me very, very solemn-like and then told me that uh, he, he apologised. It wasn't easy for him to say, but it looked like they'd have to remove my leg. I, I was already feeling like um, I wasn't... Uh, oh, it seemed silly. I wasn't, I wasn't a man, per se. I wasn't a full man. Grew up with the idea that you always have to be this juggernaut or strength for the family and all that sort of stuff so you can get through there and so that they can take care of themselves. And it all comes down to you wanting to make life better for them. I was talking to my son this morning and he goes, are you all right, Dad? You're going to be all right, eh, Dad? You know, you knew, you knew this was going to happen. You'll be all right, eh? You can handle this. And, you know, I can't say no, I can't handle it, son. No, I'm not all right. You know, he doesn't want to hear that. So I can't say that. I can't say I'm, I'm shitting myself. I'm scared crapless, you know? I just have to let him know, yeah, OK, yeah, I'm all right. <sighs> what their dad really wants to do is sit back in the corner somewhere and feel friggin' sorry for himself. I, I actually would have no idea. Um, how my son would react if I was to tell him how I really felt about it. <laughs> you can't do that to your kids because you want them to be able to uh, rise up to the challenges. And I, know, I feel so guilty if, if, if they were to actually see how I felt. Just, they don't prepare you for that when you um, become a parent and all that. You just, you know, I, all I did was just love my kids and, oh, man. I know he's in a lot of pain. I have moments as well to think about it, but no, we're quite, I don't know, just kind of brush it off kind of thing, eh? I'm not as sensitive as I should be, although I am. I'm not at the same time, you know. Um, I don't know, we always laugh about it, and, you know, it's always, go talk to Dad, you know, always take the piss. So I guess it's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. He still tries to act like he's OK. He always has a sense of humour, he's always laughing. Yeah, but... His fire is strong. I don't even think he cares about that anymore. Bernice's husband, Phil, also has type 2 diabetes. Because of Bernice's experiences, he makes a big effort to keep his under control. Losing a limb scares me. Mm -hmm. That's a real horrible disease, really, and when you get it, like um, Benicia's got it, and when you lose, start to lose limbs and that, and kidney failure and that, so it's, it's a real eye-opener. Our lifestyle on that has changed with our eating habits and that, and the exercise that I get, it, um, it's helping. Yes, yeah, not losing much weight, but yeah, we keep trying. I don't believe that some of the stuff that I've been through, I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Well, the emotional support is fantastic.
within the next 48 hours, I'm going to have my left leg below the knee amputation of my left leg. I'm still up and down with my emotions. And I don't know how to feel about all this stuff. You don't have to worry about what if, what if, what if anymore. It's going to happen. Right. Do you want um, some fruit and yogurt for lunch? Please. Bernice worries her daughter, Terry, will also get type 2 diabetes. I'm probably like a broken record about looking after themselves, and especially Terry, you know, telling her to stop drinking fizzy drinks all the time. I do bleat on probably more than I should, but I don't want to see either one of them go through what I've been through. It's kind of a big eye-opener, as in, you know, that could be a reality for me if I didn't look after myself properly. And, yeah, for my baby once they're here, and, yeah, so it's quite a big eye-opener. Left below knee amputation. They say bye-bye. Yeah. It's just surreal to think that these damaged-looking limbs that I have there at the moment used to take me fishing on Great Barrier Island and hunting up in the bush. I used to go cycling and all sorts of stuff, ride motorbikes, drive a motor vehicle, simply even just walk into the shop. You just don't, don't think about those things until well, until they start looking like they're going to take that use away from you. With my diabetes, why you see me look good, but it's hiding inside. You feel unhealthy. So I started walking and do all these exercises. I go for a walk three times a week. I don't want to say, I've got diabetes, I've got high blood pressure. Because people might say to you, oh, because you don't eat healthy food and that. You know, people should realise it's a lack of money you're getting, the good food that you're supposed to have. But what you're getting is the cheap food. But that cheap food making people sick. I thought mum had it. I only got it just recently. Like... Brian's sister, Lavinia Cairo, has come from Brisbane to support her brother through his amputation. She has type 2 diabetes. Dad, yeah. uncle, you, mum. Wave. Me. Oh, wave now. Yeah, wave. And Mitch too now. Hey. I think Mitch said he's, yeah. Are you still on pills? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on that um, metformin. And then I want insulin as well. I'm good as long as I eat my healthy food and try and stick to it. I get naughty sometimes, you know. Chocolate, come on. Because <laughs> I'm good normally, you know. I could go without bread for a month. I don't drink, I don't smoke. I'm so boring. So you think I'm going to be all right, sis? Yeah, of course. You will. Yeah, I'm going to be all right. I'm just not going to be what I'm used to, and that's what, that's what's here. Yeah. Um, so, Brian, unfortunately, has been in hospital now for five months. Uh, he's had multiple complications uh, from his diabetes and uh, leg ulcers. Uh, he also has a secondary problem of poor blood supply to the, to the leg. Um, unfortunately, uh, this has been uh, culminated in eight procedures that he's had over the last five months, and uh, now, the ulcers have caused blood poisoning and he needs to have a baloney amputation. Being six months pregnant, I want to start yeah, looking after myself a lot more. Sort of make sure I go to the supermarket instead of eating out every night at, you know, McDonald's or fast food restaurants. So we did that glucose test, that yeah. fasting glucose um, tolerance test. 
for checking if you have gestational diabetes and it's come back totally normal, okay. which is great. And what happens with this result, people go, yay, we've now done and it's all normal and they yep. normalize that and then later on we sit at about 36, 37 weeks looking at gestational diabetes. Brian's lost his leg, but doctors have warned he may need to lose more. I just couldn't stop looking at it. I still can't stop looking at it. I'm trying to picture myself moving around in my environment at home with that. And it's kind of weird because all I see myself doing is sitting in a wheelchair. Okay, you got this now, Brian, so. I heard one of the doctors talking about that, that leg may need to go as well, because it would need to support the weight of this and that would develop certain pressure points and it would need to go. Gotta get out of this place, going a bit crazy. Going a bit crazy in here at the moment, been here too long. My mum, she does pretty well, you know. She's definitely a hero and someone I look up to. Having my mum, you know, be able to meet my baby in there does mean a lot to me. I brought some scans over for you to have a look at. You've got the hand up here, foot down there, and it's laying on its back. Oh, so it's waving to you. Yeah. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be around to see Terry's child go up. And I also worry because there's diabetes in the family that that child could end up with diabetes. Mm -hmm. At this stage, my health is as good as what it could be, but the ultimate would be to have a kidney transplant, which I've been on the list now for over three years. But you never know when one's going to come in and when it's going to happen. But every year you get reviewed and everything's still got to be within a certain criteria and your blood tests have to be good, so um, that keeps you on the list. There's a big list or a long list of criteria that you need to be um, compliant with to be considered to be on the transplant list. And um, just having a transplant offered to you by family and friends isn't enough. Uh, yeah, you need to have quite a few things um, in line, the doctors like. Obviously, they, they didn't want to do a big procedure like that on someone that's going to waste it by not taking care of themselves. So I'm, I'm not that bad, but I, I need to get a few more ticks on my criteria list before I'd be considered. Brian's son, Joseph, has come to help him pack. Brian's been told his leg has healed enough to go to rehab. Mm. Oh, I'll be fine. You right? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Woohoo! Ugh. Oh, great. So where are you going from here? They're going to send me from here to rehab plus. So they're going to help you focus on your upper body strength to help you... Well, that's what that... Jump from is, chair to chair. Your aim is to push me so that I build my upper body strength up. Because I haven't been using my upper body strength for six years because I had to do the dialysis thing. Oh, so yeah. you do this, arm exercise, you do this one, yeah. And you gotta do this one. Yeah. And you gotta do this one, and then you do the other arm. And then you gotta do, I gotta do this exercise when I'm lying in bed. This is quite easy, actually. And then breakfast. I'm guessing that's how you get your appetite, you work out. And that's breakfast. just morning. Yeah. So run out. Lofa Kirisiano does her shopping every Saturday at the Otara markets. She eats pretty healthily, so nutritionist Karen Zinn wants to find out why she developed type 2 diabetes. So Lofa, how long have you been living in New Zealand for? 
29 years. 29 years is a long time. Mm. Yeah, and um, when you came from Samoa to Auckland, did your diet change at all? We buy all um, cheaper fat foods before. Okay, like what? Um, you know, those chicken bags and stuff like that when yeah. all the kids were young. Um, I always buy the back, yeah. um, box of noodles. Yeah, so, so you had a lot of that kind of stuff? Yeah. Was it was it cheap and easy to, to get hold and of? Cheap easy, that's why. Yeah, so it made it you know affordable for the family and, and all and, that kind of stuff? And fast, because I was a working mum and I just grab fast one for them before I go to yeah. work or finish work tired. Those, those might not be the best for your body. Okay. Because they, they give you that they give you quite a high sugar load. Mm. Because a lot of those foods are processed, like ri you know rice and bread and crackers and yeah. you know noodles. Those sorts of foods are very processed. You're surrounded by uh, this amazing market, yes. and, and the vegetables here are really cheap. This is where I come and and, and, and do my vegetable yeah. and fruits chopping. Yes, my Good. young one sometimes. Can I have takeaway? No, no takeaway. You have to help eat our home cook. That's really good. Yeah. If, you, if you can stick to that for your family, that's the best that you can do for yeah. them. Bernice often visits people new to their amputations to give them support. Hi, Brian. Hello. I'm Bernice. Hi, Bernice. Nice to meet you. And you too. Mm -hmm. I've heard so much about you. Yes, I've heard a lot about you ah. too. <laughs> Um, when I had my leg off, um, the first time I actually looked at it is when they pulled the bandages off and they said to me, the doctor said to me at the time, do you want to look at this? And I said, well, yes, because... Um, so what did you look at before that time? I just kept the sheet over it. Ah! Would you like to have a look at my leg? Because it's very similar to what yours yeah. is. Just without the bandages on. You just push a button on this leg to release it off here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, depending on the thickness of your knee to fit in your leg, you wear different number of socks. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah it looks like the same place, eh? Mm. So Do you have any feeling in that part? Yep. Yeah. Yes. But but not painful feeling? No, no. There's lots of di different variations of an yeah. amputated leg, and they do what best suits you, but ah. this is the one that suits me the best. Geez, thanks for showing me that, Billy. Things all right. Uh, it lets me see that it doesn't stop here. No, it doesn't. My amputated leg has never stopped me doing anything that I want to do. Gee, mm. it's cool. Mm. But where there's a will, there's a way. Oh, mm. terrible healer. That's mm. why I've been in here for five months. Yeah. Yeah, and that was just a blister, one pressure point. Well, so do you know what? Mine healer. started off the same. I was training to do the Rotorua Marathon and I bought some new shoes yeah. and I got a blister under the bottom of my toe. Ah. One morning woke up, my whole foot was bright red. So I got put into hospital. That's when they found out I was a diabetic. I did have diabetes. Oh, so when how, how I was, di I was, was diabetic when I had my daughter 25 years ago. Oh, okay. And then nobody ever told me that I could possibly get it back. And then that's when I went into hospital, they found out that my blood sugar was very high then. And so what they did, they started, I had seven operations in 21 days, and they first of all cleaned it out, and then they took out my big toe, then the toe next to it, then the toe yeah, next to it, then the front of my foot, yeah. and then they said, no, 30% chance of you living, because it was travelling up my legs, so we've yeah. got to amputate your leg. Yeah, that's ex almost exactly Did what you? happened with mine. Mm. So, um, so you're on dialysis too, I understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on dialysis. So. Oh my. Do you do it at home? or? No. I my eyesight got... was too bad, so yeah. I couldn't needle myself. That's oh. why. Yeah, I've got cataracts. And so, yeah, I've done all that too. I, I would love to be able to get back to work, because that's what I miss the most. Yeah. I miss work. I miss it so much. It's, mm. it's One incredible. step at a time. Oh, gosh. Because yep. it's been two years already since yep. I've had to give up because of my health, and now I don't want this to become another burden for me to be further from being employable. And I have a tendency to get depressed quite easily, unfortunately. Like, you see me now, and I I'm, I'm, may appear to be quite positive and confident, but I actually can get very depressed it's, very easily. It's very easy to get depressed when you're in that situation, because I've mm. been there and done that too. I was very depressed when I first had my leg off, because I thought this was it, life was over. How yeah. was I ever going to go on? 
um, and I've been to some pretty low places as well but I'm very lucky I've got a wonderful wonderful man in my life that's helped me come out of them life can still go on without a letter yeah that's cool mm. that, gives, that gives me yeah. a whole lot thank you Bernice yeah. a whole lot to oh, think about welcome. Today, I am going to Rehab Plus in Point Chevalier after a six month, eight day stay at Middlemore Hospital. Yay! Hey Ryan, um, because of the um, pain issues you've been having overnight, you might not go today. They might not be able to cope with it. It's just like you just shoved a knife in my back. Text. Man, I told everybody that I was going to rehab today. Yeah. And I was in, I was actually getting excited because I wanted a new digs. Hey, have mm. a good new surroundings. Yeah, that's right. New staff. Yeah. It was it was pretty bad last night. Mm. It's in my toes. Yeah. On both feet. Yeah. And I know I've got no toes on both feet. They, they were just telling me that um, because I, I was sick as last night, crook, mm. uh, and I was in so much pain last night that my nurse had just come in now and told me that they're a bit worried about seeing me this morning because of all the pain I was in last night. All right, let's just have a look at this uh, this foot. Wait, I, don't want to, I don't want to peel any skin off with it, but this is just uh, rubbish. There's no skin in there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remain optimistic that's going to heal. The blood supply is not great, but it's good enough to heal it. So basically, what, what you're saying is, it's, it's we got a risk of this amputation happening to this leg in the long run. Yeah, I have to be honest with you. There is a risk of that. Yeah, and this leg's even more important now. Yeah. Because that's going to be key to your independence. We do see major amputations once every fortnight, and it's mostly diabetes related. When I was training, a lot of the disease was smoking-related, some diabetes-related, but now it's nearly, it's almost universally diabetes-related. Bernice has her first grandchild. It's a boy. By the time baby Lachlan is 21, it's predicted the number of New Zealanders with type 2 diabetes will double. Next week, we visit Samoa, where this future has already happened. YouTube was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.